Hello everyone. Welcome to this video lecture of 19 SCPHYU301. In the previous lecture, we have started discussing the second chapter, partial differentiation. Partial differentiations arise when we have a function which depends on more than one independent variable. Suppose this is a function which now depends on n number of independent variables x1, x2, x3 up to xn are the independent variables on which this function depends. Then the message from the last lecture is when we find mth order partial differentiation of this function f which is function of n number of independent variables then in general there are going to be n raised to m number of different partial differentiations and all of them can be different. In this lecture we want to discuss the concept of total differential and we will apply that concept to two examples. The first one in which we find out approximate value of the given calculations and the second application will be to find out the relative error. The second application of relative error is important from physics point of view because it is part of the error analysis that one has to make when one is performing physics experiment. Let's get started with the total differential. Suppose I have a function which is function of x, y and z. So we have a function of three variables. Now suppose that we change x from x to x plus delta x, y from y to y plus delta y and z is changed from z to z plus delta z. Now naturally since the independent variable on which the function depends are being changed, the function will have a different value at these points x plus delta x, y plus delta y and z plus delta z. These delta x delta y and delta z in general can be positive or negative when, de when they are positive that means we are increasing the value of the independent variable whereas if they are negative that means we are decreasing the value of that independent variable. They can also be equal to 0 some of them can be 0 and when they are 0 that means we are not changing the, the particular independent variable. Let's now find out this difference delta f that is observed in the function when we change the independent variables like this which is going to be equal to difference between this function at x plus delta x, y plus delta y and z plus delta y with delta z with x, y and z. So in this way suppose we change the independent variables by finite amount delta x, delta y and delta z in this case we will observe a difference of finite amount in the function itself and that I am denoting as delta f. Now suppose we consider that these delta x, delta y and delta z are tending to 0. Small then I can write them as dx sorry this has to be dx dy and dz respectively and since the changes in the independent variables are infinitesimally sm small this tf or change that is observed in the function is also going to be infinitesimally small which can be written as f of x plus dx y plus dy and z plus dz minus f of x, y, z. What is difference between these two mathematical statements? The difference is in the first case, in this case, the changes in these independent variables are considered to be finite. They are small but they are finite and therefore the change which is observed in the function is also going to be finite. While in the second case, in this case, the changes in the independent variables are infinitesimally small and therefore change that is observed in the function is also infinitesimally small. In this lecture we want to 
derive a relation for this total differential in terms of partial differentiation. Before we derive that, let's first consider how we can approximate functions of single variables by using the concept of total difference. Suppose this is the function which is function of x only, it is function of single variable x. Now to see how total difference can be considered for function of a single variable, let's first expand this function in Taylor series. f of x can be expanded in Taylor series as follows. It is f of a. This means we are finding the function at x is equal to a plus f prime at a. So we differentiate function f with respect to x and then find that differentiation at x is equal to a which is f prime a into x minus a plus f differentiated twice with respect to x and that double differentiated calculated at x is equal to a divided by 2 factorial into x minus a whole square plus f differentiated 3 times and then calculated at x is equal to a divided by 3 factorial into x minus a cube and this expansion is infinite series expansion so this is f n a that means it is differentiation of the function n number of times and that differentiation is calculated at x is equal to a divided by n factorial into x minus a raised to n plus so on. So this is Taylor series expansion of the function. We will now expand this f of x plus delta x where delta x is the small change small but finite change in the variable x this is going to be equal to and we are going to expand this about x now that means this a for our case is going to be equal to x so this expansion therefore is f of x plus f prime x into delta x plus f double prime x divided by 2 factorial into delta x square plus f differentiated 3 times at x is equal to x divided by 3 factorial into delta x cube and the series continues. Let me write this f of x plus delta x as f of x plus f prime x into delta x plus epsilon where epsilon is equal to f differentiated twice at x divided by 2 factorial into delta x square plus f differentiation differentiated 3 times with respect to x 3 factorial into delta x cube plus this is fn delta x raised to n divided by n factorial and the series continues. So remember we are writing f of x plus delta x in this fashion where epsilon is this term. Let's find the total difference delta f delta f is equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x therefore it is equal to f prime x plus epsilon remember sorry it is f prime x into delta x plus epsilon let me carry a couple of equations that we have on this slide onto next slide the first equation is delta f of x is equal to f prime x into delta x plus epsilon where epsilon is f double prime x divided by 2 factorial into delta x square 
plus f differentiated three times at x divided by 3 factorial into delta x cube plus this is infinite series so I'll write one of the terms here this is delta x raised to n and it continues the first part on right hand side now is called as the principal part of the total differential here you can see that this term of principal part is in linear with delta x delta x is only raised to 1 there and that's why it is a linear equation if we consider this epsilon now when delta x is very small then since it contains the terms with delta x raised to 2 and higher powers of delta x it will become smaller and smaller and therefore we can approximate this total differential f of x as f prime x into delta x so this is the total differential for a function of a single variable f prime x here is tf by dx first order differentiation of x this is called as linear approximation sometimes it is also called as tangential approximation if we consider this limit now where limit delta x is tending to zero you can convince yourself that what we get is the definition of df by dx let's quickly summarize of what we are saying about total difference of a function of a single variable we are saying that this total difference delta f at x can be calculated by this formula f prime x into delta x plus epsilon where epsilon is the error which is equal to f double prime x divided by 2 factorial into delta x square plus f differentiated 3 times divided by 3 factorial delta x cube and so on and this error will go on decreasing as we go on in decreasing the value of delta x and if we use this equation now delta f x equal to f prime x into delta x this is not the exact formula it is approximately correct because we are leaving this epsilon out of the right hand side and therefore it is only approximately correct that much that epsilon is the error that we have when we write the formula when we are using these concepts of mathematics and physics we have to apply them to real world situations and there we have to answer this question that how small epsilon should be so that it can be permitted the error can be permitted let's consider one example for this suppose i have a clock which is not running correctly it has this error of say 0 0.01 seconds when it is measuring time for one second and therefore how much time is required for this error to accumulate to one second it is going to be 100 seconds now if you do the calculations this clock now will make an error of 14.4 minutes in one day now let's consider another clock suppose i have a clock which makes an error of 0 0.001 second when it measures time in one second so for one second error is this similarly here for one second error made by this clock is equal to 0 0.001 second after doing the calculations you will see that this clock will make error of 1.44 minutes in one day and in this way the observer has to decide on how much error in the fi final calculation is permissible and based on that we have to decide how much small delta x should be or how small this epsilon should be so that the calculations or this theory can be considered to be correct let's now apply this concept of total differential for a function of more than one variable suppose i have a function which is function of three variables x y z and i am finding this delta f i want to find what is 
delta f when we are changing x to x plus delta x y from y to y plus delta y and z from z to delta z so this difference is to be calculated now we can proceed in the similar way as we have done for function of single variable when we consider the linear approximation then this delta f we can write as this now will be partial differentiation with respect to x into delta x plus epsilon 1 plus dou f by dou y into delta y plus epsilon 2 plus dou f by dou z into delta z plus epsilon 3 so on the right hand side what you see is this much is the change that occurs in the function since you have changed delta x and this epsilon 1 now going to have terms which are delta x squared or higher powers of delta x the second term is change that occurs in the function since y is changed from y to delta y and an epsilon 2 has terms which are of the power of delta y raised to 2 or higher this third term is change that occurs in the functions because z is changed and epsilon 3 are the terms which involve delta z square and higher powers of delta z we can say that the changes that we are making here are infinitesimally small so delta x is tending to 0 and therefore this can now be written as dx delta y is tending to 0 so it will become delta y dy this is delta z tending to 0 so it can be written as dz and for these limits epsilon 1 epsilon 2 and epsilon 3 all will be tending to 0 and similarly the change that we observe in the function will also be infinitesimally small and therefore the equation that we obtain here is df of x y z is equal to dou f by dou x into dx plus dou f by d dou y sorry into dy plus dou f by dou z into dz this is a special case where we are considering only three variables remember that this df is total differential which is basically the difference in x plus dx y plus dy z plus dz minus f of x y z with straightforward generalization we can write df which is function of many variables now is equal to dou f by dou x into dx plus dou f by dou y into dy plus dou f by dou z into dz and then you have to consider all the terms for each of these variables this first term here on right hand side is change that occurs in f because x is change this dou f by dou x is rate with which the function is changing at x and when you multiply it by the change we get the net change that occurred in the function because we changed the variable x similarly in this second term this dou f by dou y tells us rate with which function is changing at y and when we multiply it by dy the change in the variable this product gives us the total change that occurred in the function because of change in y and in this way we go on considering all the terms find out the sums and that gives us the total change that is observed or the total differential that is observed let's now see how we can apply the concept of total differential to calculate the square for that what i'll do is i'll consider a function which is function of two variables while writing this function i am taking hint from what i have to calculate this is equal to square root of x square minus y square 
Now suppose I find this f at x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 3, then what I have here is 25 minus 9, which is equal to 4. So I know that function at the given point at x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 3 is equal to 4. But if we look at the calculations, x is now changed from 5 to 4.98 and therefore delta x is equal to minus 0 0.02. Similarly, y is changed from 3 which we have considered here to 3.03 and delta y is positive, it is plus 0 0.03. Let's first find out what is total difference that occurs at the given point x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 3. It can be calculated as follows. It is dou f by dou x into dx plus dou f by dou y into dy. Note that this formula is for infinitesimally small changes. For considering it for finite changes, we have to write it like this delta f is equal to dou f by dou x into dx plus dou f by dou y into dy. So dou f by dou x is equal to dou by dou x of square root of x square minus y square, which is equal to x divided by square root of x square plus y square and dou f by dou y is dou by dou y of this function x square minus y square which is equal to minus y divided by square root of x square plus y square. You can convince yourself that these are actually the partial differentiations. Therefore, delta f is equal to x divided by square root of x square minus y square this is minus into delta x this is finite change now plus y or minus square root of x square minus y square into delta y we are finding this total difference at x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 3. Therefore, delta f turns out to be equal to 5 divided by 4 into delta x is minus 0 0.02 minus y is 3 divided by 4 into delta y is 0 0.03 which is equal to minus 0 0.0475. Remember that this is a change. Therefore, we can now write 4.98 square minus 3.03 square as the function at 5 square minus 3 square plus delta f which is the change which is equal to 3.9525. Let's now consider more important application for calculating relative error in different experiments. We will see this application through this example please pause the video here and read the problem carefully before we solve this problem first let's see what relative error is suppose i have this scale and all these numbers are in meters therefore this scale is 10 meter long what is least count of this scale the least count is the smallest measurement that we can take with this scale which is equal to if you consider this difference it is of 1 meter and that 1 meter is divided into 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 equal parts and therefore least count of this scale is equal to 1 meter divided by 5 
which is equal to 0.2 meter in an experiment what you are doing is you are measuring length of this black line by using the scale so you have placed the scale such that its zero is at one end of the line and the second end is here and you can see that this marking is 8.4 and this is 8.6 the line actually is lying in between the two markings what is length of that line given this situation one naive answer can be 8.5 meter why 8.5 because this line ends somewhere between 8.4 and 8.6 roughly in the middle of the two markings but when we are performing physics experiment we have to note the measurement in more principled way suppose the line was ending somewhere here between 8.4 and 8.6 and it was close to 8.4 mark in if i decide to note this reading as 8.42 since it is closer to 8.4 meter marking that is not a very principled way to note the observations in a physics experiment why because these approximations that i am making are person dependent every person will make some different approximation and therefore the error which we will introduce in this way will be such that they cannot be subjected to quantitative analysis therefore we have to decide on one of the conventions one of them can be i can say that i'll always note down the reading which is the lower reading so one possibility is that i note this as 8.4 meter generally this is the case when you take main scale reading because you add vernier scale reading to that and that gives you more accurate reading the second possibility is that i note down the reading which is closer to the next immediate marking third way i can note down this reading is 8.4 meter so no matter where this line is as compared to the mar markings we always consider it at the middle of that if the line is reaching up to this point i note it as 8.5 if it reaches up to this point i still note it as 8.5 so no matter where the line ends between these two markings i always take the third reading 8.5 so this can be three possible conventions we can decide when we measure length of a line using the scale let me try to explain it once again this line is ending between these two markings this is 8.4 and this marking is 8.6 so according to the first convention if i decide to note down the reading on the lower side marking then it is 8.4 meter the error that i have is always negative what is the maximum possible error that we get when we measure length of the line at max the line can be 8.6 meter and we always measure it at 8.4 therefore the worst error that we make with this convention is 0.2 meter the second convention is that we consider the reading which is on the higher side in that case again the maximum possible error is 0.2 meter but we always overestimate length of the line and therefore this error is always positive for the third convention when we consider the length to be 8.5 then that error can be positive or negative so the error is it could be positive or it could be negative there is no way for us to tell in general whether it will be positive or negative what is the maximum error for this convention it is plus or minus 0.1 meter remember that the first convention is used whenever there are two scales to the measuring instrument when you take reading for the main scale you always consider the lower side reading we will now stick to the third convention and therefore length of this line is going to be equal to 8.5 meter what is error error is plus or minus 0.2 meter 
and now when we define relative error it is basically this ratio delta l by l which is equal to 0 0.2 divided by 8.5 and it is can be positive or negative which is equal to 0 0.0235 or I can say that relative error is plus or minus 2.35 percentage. So this is how relative error is defined. Let's find relative error for this measurement. Length of this line is equal to 1.1 1 .1 and delta L is going to be same. It is plus or minus 2 and therefore relative error is delta L by L which is equal to plus or minus 0 0.182 if I want to write it in percentage then this relative error is 18.2 percent you can now compare the previous case where the relative error was 2.35 percent plus or minus and here it is equal to 18.2 percent you must get an idea of what that relative signifies Let's consider this third case. L in this for this line is equal to 0.3 and delta L does not change. It is plus or minus 2. Therefore, relative error is 0.3, sorry, 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.3, positive or negative. I calculate it in percentage, then this relative error is. 66.67 percent you can try to find relative error for this small line but that is going to be a hopeless case let's now try to solve the problem we are measuring this acceleration due to gravity with this formula 4 pi square l by t square we know that relative error in l or delta l by l is equal to 5 percent or I can write that to be equal to 0 0.05 similarly delta t by t is equal to 6 percent so I can write it as 0 0.06 but these errors can be positive or negative so they can either have positive or negative sign and we want to find out what is the worst error that we will make if we use this formula with these errors in l and t to calculate the worst error now first let's take log of the whole equation which is going to be equal to log of 4 pi square plus log l minus 2 log t now we differentiate this equation which gives us tg by g the first term is a constant and therefore it will not contribute when we find the differentiation the second is going to be dl by l minus d2 into dt by t now note that this dl by l is plus or minus 0 0.5 and dt by t is plus or minus 0 0.6 therefore dg by g is equal to plus or minus 0 0.5 minus 2 into plus or minus 0 0.06 now the worst relative error dg by d will occur when we consider this plus sign here and minus sign for this case which is equal to dg by d g is 0 0.5 plus 0.12 which is equal to 0.17 and therefore relative error that we have is equal to 17 percent this is how the concept of total differentiation can be used to find the relative error so this is the summary of what we have done in this lecture we define the total differential total differential for function which depends on more than one variable is calculated like this df is equal to dou f by dou x into dx plus dou f by dou y into dy 
plus do f by do z into dz plus so on so we are changing x to x plus delta x y to y plus delta y and similarly we are changing all the independent variables this first term is contribution in the change of the function because we are changing x the second term is there because of change in y this third term is because of change in z and in this fashion all these changes will go on accumulate when we change all the variables in general and that will contribute to the total difference in next video we will consider chain rule for partial differentiations thank you for watching this video